Hey everybody, how are you doing today? Today I have a special recipe that I'm making. Something that I love, something that my family loves, something that my friends love, something that we all love. Can you guess what it is? Of course you can guess what it is because it's in the title, right? That's right. All right, so today I'm going to be making a big old pot of Zupa Toscana. That's right, big old pot of Zupa Toscana. If you've ever been to the Olive Garden, then you already know exactly what it is. I think Olive Garden gave it that name. It's not really a Zupa Toscana. It's just that we all know it as the Zupa Toscana. So that's what I'm making today. What are the ingredients you're gonna need? They're down below, but I'm gonna tell you anyway, just because, hey, I feel like talking a lot today. All right, so here we go. Oh, and by the way, it's an easy recipe. I'm making a serving of 16 servings because we eat a lot of this stuff. And then later on after we eat, we're gonna eat some more later on and then have some leftovers tomorrow. Mm. Tasty. That's right. All right, so it's gonna take about, about 40 minutes to cook. Let's give you the ingredients. I have the notes on my phone. Yeah, we go. All right, we're so gonna need three pounds of Italian sausage. We got this from Winco. We're gonna need 24 slices of bacon. Now with the bacon, I already took it out the pack. I already have it sliced in half. And then I'm gonna slice it into smaller slices and then we're gonna cook them up. We're gonna need three medium yellow onions. And I have my onions already chopped up. I have this trusty thing that I love to cut my onions with. It's, it's real simple. You just put the onion or the potatoes, whatever you're gonna slice, you just put it on there and then you just slam it down and then it cuts it. So I already have my onions already sliced, as you will see. Voila, the onions are already sliced. And then we're also going to need six cloves of garlic. All right, so I already have the cloves of garlic. We're gonna need six tablespoons of flour. I already have my six tablespoons of flour. We're going to need 96 ounces of chicken stock. So I have my chicken stock right here and these are the containers. These are 32 ounces. So you're pretty much gonna need three of these, okay? Or chicken broth, as you can call it. Um, and then we're also gonna need 12 large russet potatoes. Got my potatoes right here. All right, already washed off and ready to be sliced. For me, I get the potatoes done first. So the first thing you're gonna do is get your potatoes done. So you're gonna get your pot of potatoes. You're gonna make sure the potatoes, some of them are thickly sliced, about the size, about the width of your thumb. And then some of the potatoes, the other half, is gonna be sliced about half the width of your thumb. Okay, so you're gonna do half of the potatoes cut about the width of your thumb, the other half of the potatoes about half the width of your thumb, all right? So you're gonna put the chicken broth into the pot, you're gonna boil the potatoes until they're almost done. Not completely done, until they're almost done, okay? Then, you're gonna chop up your bacon into slices, and you're gonna cook those until they're done. Not super crunchy hard or anything like that, but until they're done, you're gonna save the grease and put it to the side, okay? Then you're gonna take your Italian sausage and you're gonna cook that up. And then you're gonna drain the grease into the grease that you have the bacon grease that's put to the side, all right? Then you're gonna take your chopped up onions and you're gonna take your chopped up garlic cloves and you're gonna put the garlic cloves and the onions into a skillet together and you're gonna pour a little bit of that bacon and sausage grease into the skillet and cook it up. You're gonna cook that up until it's partially done. So you don't want your onions to be transparent, okay? It's not like a deep saute. So you want them to be cooked enough, but the onions still have that whiteness to it, okay? So that's your other step. After you get that saute, the onions and the garlic, then you're gonna take some of the juice from the potatoes, because you're not gonna drain your potatoes, remember this. Do not drain the liquid out of your potatoes once they're boiled. Just sit the pot to the side. Don't drain anything out. So you're gonna take some of, I'd probably say about 
quarter of a cup of the water from the potatoes, which is the chicken broth water. And you're gonna pour it into the skillet that has the onions and the garlic in it. You're gonna take your flour, I believe it's your six tablespoons of flour. You're gonna pour that on top of the onions and garlic. And then you're gonna mix it all in and slow cook it. Don't cook it all the way, just so it can thicken up. You want like, almost like a, not paste-like, but you wanna thicken it up. After you do that, okay, listen. After you do that, you're gonna take all those ingredients, the onions and garlic with the flour mixed up, you're gonna put that into the pot with the potatoes that has the chicken broth fluid liquid in it that you boiled it in. You're gonna take your Italian sausage and put that all into the pot with the potatoes and the onion and garlic. Then you're gonna take your bacon that you cooked up and you're gonna put that into a pot with the mix that everything that you put in, okay? And then you're gonna take your kale and put that into the pot and mix it in and you're going to take the whipping cream the heavy whipping cream and you're going to put that into the pot as well and you're going to take your salt and pepper mix and you get the dash of that you're going to put that into the pot and then you're just going to let it cook up real nice until it thickens up real nice and then if you want it to be even more thicker you can add some cornstarch to it or if you don't have cornstarch, you can add some flour. Now, if you want it to thicken up, I would take a cup of cold water, take some flour, a couple tablespoons of it, and pour it into the cold water, and just stir it until you have a cup of kind of like a water flour mix. And then I would slowly pour it into the pot of boiling Zupa Toscana until you get the thickness that you want, okay? And that's it. Now that I've said all that, are you guys ready to cook? All right, let's cook. Here we go. And you're gonna need three cups of heavy cream. I already have my heavy cream, whipping cream, heavy whipping cream is what they call it. So you can get this at your grocery store. And we're also gonna need one and a half bunches of kale. All right, so I have my two bunches of kale right here. So you're gonna need one and a half bunches of kale. Um, and then you're gonna need salt and pepper. And my salt and pepper is already right here. You're just gonna need a pinch. You're not gonna need a lot of salt. Salt to taste, pepper to taste, okay? So you're gonna have that. And then that's it. That's all you're gonna need. All right, so I'm gonna get out of your face. You're gonna be seeing my hands do most of the work from now on because it's gonna be videotaped shooting at an angle so that way you can see exactly what goes on as I prep it. Because even though I am kinda of handsome sometimes, you don't need to see me all the time, all right? So, I will see you guys in my hands, moving around, dicing, frying, sauteing, and all that stuff. But hey, you'll still hear my voice. You'll still hear my voice, so get comfortable in your kitchen. Get ready to cook and let's have some fun making this big old pot, all right? Oh yeah, by the way, so this serving is for, like I said, 18 servings. So you can cut it in half and turn it into how many? 18 divided into two is what? That's right, nine servings. Yes, you're good at math. I'm all right at math. Um, but hey, let's get to cooking. All right, so let's get this bacon prepared because first we're gonna to need to slice it up. Then we're gonna heat it in a large skillet, which is this baby right here. And then we're gonna brown it up. And then we're gonna add, do some sausage as well. So first, let's get the bacon taken care of. Now, also, before I get the bacon cut up, I love bacon, just like a lot of other people do. And so I am going to be also adding some of this right here. It's the um, bacon crumbles, got it from Costco. And it is real bacon. It's not fake bacon or anything like that. It is real bacon, all right? So I like to add some of this to, um, to my Zupa Toscana to give it that extra flavor as well. All right, so first, let's slice this up and get this cooked up. And I'll use this knife right here. Now you can slice the bacon up according to how you like it. If you wanna use whole pieces, then go ahead and use whole pieces. If not, then you can slice it up like I'm doing. And then, um, so that way every bite will have some bacon in it. 
That's the goal. My motto is if you put ingredients into a food, you want to make sure that every bite has every ingredient. Okay, it's kind of like buying a hamburger or a cheeseburger and then some of your bites have cheese in it and some of your bites don't. After all, you ordered a cheeseburger. Every bite should have cheese in it. Voila. All right. Now let's bring these babies up. this in the sink, wash my hands real quick. All right, so now I'm going to get my second skillet out and we're going to get the sausage going. Voila. And with this, we're going to have use these three pounds of Italian sausage get it cooked up, then we're gonna start working on the garlic and the onions. Now all the meat that I am using in this is pork, okay? It's pork meat. If you wanna do a healthier version of it, let's say um, use turkey, turkey bacon, and use um, turkey sausage, then um, you can do that as well. All right, so now the bacon look like it's pretty much ready, so I'm gonna turn that off. I'm gonna work on the sausage. Now you don't want to throw away your bacon grease yet because you will want to use some to combine with the pork um, grease when you saute the, um, the onions and garlic to give it that extra flavor. All right, so this is the grease from the bacon over here um, that I sat to the side. So just remember, hold on to your bacon grease. All right, so now looks like the sausage is done. All right, so we're gonna sit that to the side. Now the sausage produced very, very little grease. I'm gonna get what I can out of it, and I'm gonna mix it in with the bacon grease. All right, so turn the stove off. All right. And we're gonna try and drain some of the grease off. Okay. Get that out of the way. And I did get some of the grease off of the sausage, yes. All right. All right, so now, got that out of the way. It's time to do the garlic and the onions. All right, so let me get another skillet out. All right, we got that. Here, let me move this over. And remember, while I'm doing all of this, make sure your potatoes are being done as well. that to the side. Okay. 
Okay. And like I showed you earlier, I already have my onions diced up. If you guys don't have one of these, make sure you get one. It is a lifesaver when it comes to slicing, dicing onions, all right? So with this right here, I already have my onions done. And I'll show you how it works real quick. You pretty much have this slot in there like that. You slice your onions to be able to fit that, and then you just slam it down like that. And then afterwards, you end up with a bunch of onions like that, okay? All right, so we already have the onions sliced up. Now I'm just gonna slice up this garlic. Like I said, it's gonna be it's about six cloves of garlic or more. If you love garlic, just keep using garlic. Keep adding garlic. All right, so this is pretty simple. I'm not gonna be all perfect with this. I just wanna get them up in little chunks. And don't slice your fingers. I wish I had better fast knife skills, you know what I mean? Like how you see some of the chefs, they go through and just go crazy with it. I'm not one of those guys. I'm a tech guy. You put me on the computer, it's all good. You put me in a room with a bunch of knives, I'm like, okay, I will be careful and slow. All right, so, can you see it? Yeah, I'm gonna take some of this grease that has the um, bacon and the pork sausage grease drippings in it, and I'm gonna add it to here. Okay, I'm not gonna add a whole lot. I'm going to add the onions. All right, so you don't wanna overcook your onions. Because in a lot of recipes, they say cook until clear or translucent, but that's not the case here. I just want the onions to cook up enough so that way you can get some of this good old flavoring from it, from the bacon and from the sausage. All right, so the onions are prepared with the garlic. And we'll sit this to the side. Grab the gloves so I don't burn my hand. All right. All right, guys, so the potatoes are partially cooked. The broth is still in there. The chicken broth and the water from the potatoes is still in there. The bacon is already done. The Italian sausage has already been prepared. So now we're just going to add some flour and some chicken broth to the onion garlic um, that we already prepared. Okay, so we're going to add that and we're going to add the six tablespoons of flour and we're going to mix it in so it can get thick, all right? have a thickness to it and you can add more broth to this as well it's not a set amount to add to it add a little bit more broth from the potatoes So we just added the onion and flour and garlic mix into the potatoes. And repeat, you don't want to stir too hard because you don't want to break up the potatoes. All right, so that's mixed in there. Now we're going to add the sausage. Then we're going to add the bacon. All 
I would say that I need a bigger kitchen, but that would not be true because I used to cook, I was the head chef, um, and I created the menu for an Italian restaurant in Washington State. And the kitchen was very small, it was a big kitchen, but the cooking area was just not that big. And I can tell you this, we had a lot of fun in that kitchen coming up with some good old recipes. The owners of it would come in and they would say, hey, what do you need for today's menu? And I'd give them the list and they'd go out to the market and to the store and get everything that I wanted. All right now, we have everything mixed in except for the heavy whipping cream. So we're gonna add six cups of heavy whipping cream to this. And then we're gonna be almost on our way. Oh yes. Then we're gonna add salt and pepper. Remember the salt and pepper is you can add to taste. We started off with just a, about two pinches of salt and about two pinches of pepper. I'm gonna turn the stove on medium, bring it to a slow boil so that way the stuff can thicken up real nice. I'm about to chop up the kale and then we're gonna slowly be adding the kale to it, okay? The kale gives it this really, really cool texture um, kind of like a slight crunch and a, a, not a lettuce, yeah, kind of like a, a, a lettuce type texture to it. Really, really good. The kale doesn't have a whole lot of flavor, but it gives it that nice texture and that nice look to it as well. All right, so we're gonna chop up the kale and we're gonna slowly add it to this. So I'm just gonna just gently sit it in there. Then as it cooks down, we'll add more. All right, look at that, beautiful, beautiful. We just gently push it down in there. We're gonna add the rest. Voila. Beautiful. Beautiful. We're gonna let this slowly boil so all the ingredients can get nice and cooked up and marry each other. And then I'm gonna give it a taste. And then I'm gonna let you guys know how it tastes. All right, so let's just wait a while I'll be back when it's all done. The Zupa Tascana is done. And I am so, so happy with the way this came out. I love the texture of it. I love the way it looks. I love everything about this. The smells, the scent, oh, beautiful. All right, take a look at it. I don't know how good can you guys see this. All right. Look at that. Nice texture. Every bite has a nice chunk of bacon and sausage in it. Beautiful. Mm, mm, mm. Look at that, y'all. This is a soup you guys definitely should make at home. All right, you guys just seen the picture of how beautiful this came out. Now it's just time to taste it. Man, look at that. Nice, not too soupy, has a nice creaminess to it. Oh my goodness, y'all. This it's tasty. You can taste the bacon, you can taste the sausage, the potatoes, the garlic, the onion. 
Oh, uh, kale doesn't have a lot of flavor, so kale, I'm giving you the thumbs up for the look. This is so good, y'all. Mmm. And that noise you hear in the background, that slurping noise, that's my dog, Jack. Hey, Jack. Jack. It's hot outside, huh, buddy? Big old German Shepherd. Had to come in and get something, something to rehydrate itself before you go back out there and start barking at people. All right. All I can say, guys, and gals, you have to try this recipe. It is something that you will be proud of and will give you bragging rights. But just remember, it's so good that after you make it, just be prepared that family and friends will be asking you to make it again and again and again. I got this recipe from, I call her mom. She's not my biological mom, but she's close enough to me that I can call her mom and she calls me son. Char, Patno, thank you for introducing me to your recipe. I so appreciate it. And when you come back and visit, guess what? I will be asking you to make a pot. I will be asking you to make a pot. I will be asking you to make a pot. <laughs> Ain't that something? Didn't I just tell y'all? If you make it so good, your friends and family are gonna keep asking you to make it. Well, Shar, guess what? Next time you come visit, thank you. All right, love you guys. Be bold, be safe, be bold, and stay safe. See you guys on the next food video. Yum!